What is up, Scream Team? Zach Cherry here, and today we're gonna find out how movie critics rank the Scream franchise according to each film's individual score on Rotten Tomatoes. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button with the bell notifications turned on, and just for shits and gigs, toss this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below how you would personally rank the Scream franchise. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is interesting because on Rotten Tomatoes, the franchise has all of the movies included, but also the television show. Personally, I didn't rank the series with the movies when I did my own ranking for the Scream franchise. So there are six entries in total here, but we'll find out what is in the last place here, which apparently is going to be Scream 3 with 41% on the tomato meter and 37% as an audience score. Critics consensus. Despite some surprising twists, Scream 3 sees the franchise falling back on the same old horror formulas and cliches it once hacked and slashed with postmodern abandon. I definitely agree with that consensus just because Scream 3 did kind of go back to all of the things that the first two movies were really like satirizing. 41% for the tomato meter, like that makes sense because like critics hate horror movies. But to me, 37% for a score from the audience for Scream 3 seems very unrealistic. I think that people need to reevaluate this movie personally. I don't think it's as bad as most people say. Normally, whenever I put rankings up or polls for people to vote on, everyone automatically chooses Scream 3 the least. And even if it's for specific things, I know there, there was one a few weeks ago that I asked which movie was Sydney at her best. And personally, I think she was at her best in Scream 3. I think that was her strongest story from start to finish. And just because most people hate Scream 3, that ended up being the lowest scoring one. I'm just trying to go over like some individual reviews just to see if there's anything specific that pops out. The third time's a charm. Scream 3 is nearly on par with the first and far better than the dull second installment. Okay, Scream 2 slander notwithstanding, I think that this review is a little overzealous uh, just to say that Scream 3 is nearly on par with the first. For as long as it goes on, the month's most popular movie really is a Scream. I don't know if that's really even a positive review, that's like just, this movie came out in February and this review is dated January 1st. So everyone knows that that's like the dumping ground for the worst horror movies and just like the worst movies in general. So it's great to know that Scream 3 was like the best of the worst movies, yay. Scream 3 makes a key mistake that was successfully sidestepped by its predecessors. It takes itself seriously. Does Scream 3 actually take itself seriously? Because so far I feel that like none of these critics have actually seen this movie. Scream 3 is like the party guest who stayed too long and wore out his welcome. <laughs> That's a rather spicy review. I actually agree with that. I mean, at the time I could see what they were going for. You know, I've turned around on Scream 3 as of late and Scream 3, obviously, if you've seen my rankings, is not my least favorite. So, I mean, it's, it's, Hard to say what, I guess like in last place, I would put the series personally, the television series, just because, you know, for all the Scream movies, even at its worst, I still don't think it's its worst. I think it's just its fifth best. So just because the series is something completely outside of that, I'm gonna say that for me, last place is the series. In fifth place with a score of 61% uh, and an audience score of 56% is Scream 4. So right off the bat, this is interesting because when I did this for Halloween, literally every single one of these movies, except for I believe it was the original and 2018, had a rotten score. Uh, already the only rotten scored movie in the Scream franchise is Scream 3. Everything else has a red tomato. This is also a huge leap for an audience score as this is nearly 20% higher. Critics consensus, the franchise is showing its age, but Scream 4 is undeniably an improvement over its predecessor with just enough meta humor and clever kills. I don't remember this movie's release all that much because it did have a very quiet uh, reception, so I don't really remember what the critics were saying at the time. This is a movie that's definitely gotten less good for me over time, but I know that when I first did see it, I felt this. Like, I definitely agreed that it was an improvement over Scream 3. 
I don't really see that now. But just in terms of them saying that the franchise is showing its age, that is true. I mean, I think that was something that was unavoidable because Scream 4, I feel like, was either ahead of its time or too late of its time because I think that the Scream franchise really had its moment in the late 90s with the trilogy and then kind of now with this resurgence of the slasher movies that's come about and Scream 4 is kind of like wedged like right in the middle there in 2011 where movies like this weren't really popular. They weren't getting made. Everything was basically remakes at the time, and Scream 4 was commenting on that. An entertaining, albeit flawed, return to form from horror maestro Wes Craven, Scream 4 packs as much wit as it does bloodshed. I agree with that. I think that this movie, while it's not my favorite, uh, I still think that it deserves a fresh rating, or like, like not a fresh, but you know, a, a red tomato. And I will say that it, it does have wit and it definitely has bloodshed. The best horror films have always reflected the times, the provocative, energizing Scream 4, however, goes one better. It doesn't just mirror the times, it boldly refutes them, throwing down a big, bad middle finger salute to a world gone seemingly crazy. It's funny because everything that's here is more in line with how I feel about the new movie. The unengaged and overlong fourth screen plops its self-awareness on a new generation who must endure a late 90s flashback that's aged as well as the new metal songbook. Maybe this is just my like complete lack of understanding of music genres, but was there new metal? in Scream 4, was that new metal? Because I think that I've heard new metal before, and I don't think that anything in Scream 4 was new metal. How many times can I say new metal? This is kind of why I hate Rotten Tomatoes and don't personally subscribe to, you know, anything that I read on there, because there's nothing that's really going to tell me what I need to know about a movie. If people don't like a movie, they'll say something really salty just, you know, to to quickly uh, sum up their their hate of it, or they'll say something like very generic to describe how amazing it is. I guess what I'm saying is that I understand that you know you only have so many lines that you could sum up exactly how you're feeling, but I think that you should still use that opportunity to be fair because little reviews like this don't actually tell me anything about the movie. They more so just tell me about the person reviewing them, and if they don't have like anything constructive to say. I don't really give a shit what they're saying. It's a tired, overstuffed, overlong picture that labors to revitalize a comatose concept. The scream has effectively become a yawn. Again, I don't really agree or disagree with what this guy is saying. I think that it really comes down to Scream 4 just coming out at the wrong time. Like there just wasn't really a big enough audience for it in 2011. According to this ranking, Scream 4 is in fifth place uh, out of a total of six because we are including the TV series. And that's exactly where I placed it on my list was fifth, but just five out of five. So I agree with its placement here, just in terms of what my ranking is. In fourth place is Scream, the television series with 61% as a tomato meter score and 60% as an audience score. So critics rank this exactly the same as Scream 4 with 61%. And the audience actually prefers this a little bit more than Scream 4. And you can actually see that this has the full popcorn bucket or golden popcorn bucket, whatever we're calling it. It doesn't seem like there's any uh, critics consensus listed here. So let's just go right to the reviews. Oh, okay, wait a second. So they actually have each individual season scored separately. So I guess this is kind of like an average of all of those scores together. I'm, I'm not really sure, but we've got season one with 52%, season two with 92% and season three with 40%. Okay, I'm not gonna go back and restructure this whole ranking. Uh, I'm still gonna say that they've put the TV series in fourth place because if we are going through everything specifically, that would mean that season three is the lowest rated at 40% and then it's Scream 3 and then I guess season one and then Scream 4 and then Scream 2 with 92%. But I don't believe that because like, I'm pretty sure that even the, the highest rated Scream movie is not gonna have 92% and we're not gonna do this ranking 
and find out that season two of the television series is better than any of the movies. It is interesting that season one has a significantly lower score as compared to the second season. I don't really remember this show just in terms of like separating the first season from the second. Like it's it's all like one big blur to me and I would group it all together anyway because it is sort of one series where season three is a completely different series altogether. But uh, maybe there are individual audience scores. I'm just gonna go into season one here and see what it says. Okay, so season one, which you know has the 52% tomato meter, has a 68% audience score. So clearly the audience did like this more than the critics. The critics consensus says lacking truly compelling characters or scenarios, Scream is forced to trade too heavily on nostalgia for its big screen predecessors in the franchise. I agree, because one thing that I do remember about the television series is that I did not like any of these characters. When it comes to season two, which was 92% for the tomato meter, 79% uh, audience score. So I maybe I need to rewatch the show, specifically the second season, because you know there's obviously this huge fuss about it. Undeniably gripping and wickedly sharp, Scream returns with a killer sophomore season that manages to go further into its murderous ethos. Again, I can't really comment to that because I don't remember. So you know, maybe I'll watch it. You know, people have been telling me to talk more about the series and that might be an opportunity to do it. And then season three, which is scored 40% uh, for the tomato meter, has a 34% audience score. So that's just 3% lower for an audience score than what uh, they were saying about Scream 3. So again, I challenge anyone who like does not like Scream 3, please watch Scream 3 and then watch it back with season three and tell me that Scream 3 is a bad movie. Uh, there are no critics consensus here. I'm just gonna read like a quick review just to see if there's like a positive and a negative one. It's cleaner and crazier than the previous seasons and leans much heavier into the meta of the franchise, but none of these things are enough to save the series from serious stumbles that make the long wait for its return simply not worth it. And for positive, Scream 3 shines in its character portrayal, but falls flat with the horror. This season had a lot to live up to, and while it didn't quite meet my expectations at the end of the day, it was a fun ride while it lasted. It's funny because neither of these reviews, even though uh, one is a splat and one is a red tomato, they're both kind of like, not necessarily on the fence, but they're, they're saying it's like good and bad. But I like that, I like that in reviews. I think that, you know, you need to, you know, weigh the pros against the cons to, you know, make your statement about the, the movie or the show in this case. Anyway, back to the real franchise. Uh, in third place is Scream, the new one, with 76% uh, for a tomato meter and a fresh score at that, and then 81% for an audience score. Uh, critics consensus, the fifth Scream finds the franchise working harder than ever to maintain its meta edge and succeeding surprisingly often. I agree with that. You know, going into the new Scream movie, I was under the impression that it wasn't going to be meta at all. And I'm glad that it, you know, still retained those roots because it would have felt like too much of a departure if they had just kind of like played it as a straight horror movie. So I think that, you know, in, in terms of that, like it does succeed. And, you know, I was surprised. So that's very spot on as a consensus. Audience says Scream 2022 definitely isn't shy about calling back to the franchise's past, but it's still fun and scary in its own unique way. Again, I can't disagree with that. There is a lot of callback to the first four movies, especially the first one. Uh, and I still think that it's fun. And you know, I don't necessarily myself get scared by anything these days because I'm so desensitized, but you know, I'm sure for some people it is very scary. So I will give them that. A horror movie through and through, it's also a small town drama. It's also a vicious spot on commentary about some of the more repugnant fads in modern entertainment hellscape. It's also extremely funny. I definitely agree with the commentary 
on you know modern horror fads. I, I wouldn't necessarily call them repugnant, but you know the, it's interesting nonetheless. It's very much your father's scream. You're not going to be scared by it, but you may like being swaddled in something as cozily familiar as Freddy Krueger's sweater. That's a very maudlin way of putting it. Over two hours, Cinco de Screamo lumbers along with routine kills and a few surprises even when it makes lame attempts at shocking us. All right, first of all, I know the runtime of this movie. It is not over two hours. There's only one movie which is two hours, does not go over two hours, and that is Scream 2. So this guy's not paying attention, first of all. And then in terms of like routine kills and, you know, a few surprises, you know, I will say that like a lot of the movie is predictable in, you know, kind of like every beat that it hits, but it's more so just in terms of like how it does them. Like I've, I've mentioned this more in my reviews. Uh, I think that it really subverts your expectations of, of, you know, what you're used to with these movies. So like I see what he's saying, but I also disagree. Uh, it gets almost too meta to function. Okay. I don't even know what to say to this because like Scream's entire functionality is being meta. So it's almost like, do you not understand these movies? Was it too meta? I don't know, like maybe they went overboard. I think that it was just the right amount, like nothing really bothered me all that much about it because like at the end of the day, that's such a small, insignificant portion of the movie. And at least with this new Scream movie, they were consistent throughout. This is in third place, just in terms of, you know, how the critics have rated it. And, you know, personally, that's where I ranked it as well in, in my franchise rankings, third place. But, you know, so far our rankings are consistent, uh, at least in terms of, you know, where I put Scream 5 and where I put Scream 4. And you, this might be the biggest surprise of this list, uh, is just in terms of what is in second place, is the original Scream, with 79% and a fresh score, mind you, and then 79% as well for an audience score. Critics' consensus, horror icon Wes Craven's subversive deconstruction of the genre is sly, witty, and surprisingly effective as a slasher film itself, even if it's a little too cheeky for some. It's really hard to like go off of this consensus because you know scream is a movie which is like over 25 years old now so most of these reviews uh, at least that have been calculated into scream score here were written in 1996. Like I'm sure there's been an abundance of new reviews, but primarily most of them came out when the movie was released. So it's interesting that this is not in first place and you know, we'll get to what what critics think is in first place here because I think that, you know, if this was reevaluated today, this probably would be in first place. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon because the only review from 1996 is this one from Entertainment Weekly. And there's nothing after that until 2000. So I, maybe I just, like, how does Rotten Tomatoes, like, collect their data? Like, there's, I would assume that there would be scores of reviews from 1996 about this movie. So that's, that's very peculiar to me. And that might be telling as to why this isn't in first. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. This is weird. Poised on the knife edge between parody and homage, Wes Craven's Scream is a deft, funny, shrewdly unsettling tribute to such slasher exploitation thrillers as Terror Train, New Year's Evil, and Craven's own A Nightmare on Elm Street. Those are like some very weird references, I mean, outside of A Nightmare on Elm Street, because Terror Train and New Year's Evil are not like movies that I would really like think about when I'm just like, oh, what are movies that are referenced by Scream? Or just like, you know, horror movies in general that people would be like, oh yeah, like we routinely talk about Terror Train and New Year's Evil all the time. I don't even think New Year's Evil is mentioned in Scream, so okay. The movie is less concerned with explaining motivations than it is with dismantling the social mechanisms which produce them. I mean, that's pretty spot on. In fact, it's taken right out of the script, so yeah. In an age that is nearly devoid of talented horror movie directors, it has become tiresome having to consider the in considerable 
aggravating to search for rationales for the haphazardly assembled creations of people like Craven. Like it's just almost like I grabbed a thesaurus and just threw like a bunch of shit there to just like be as much of a dick as possible about Wes Craven. And it just feels like very pointed, like they had a beef with him. I don't like this reviewer. Bob Stevens. The end product, while predictable and gory, does manage to be as good as prior slasher films. It just could do a lot better. <laughs> Again, this is a perfect example of a review that I feel was just like spoken too soon. Because, you know, this is something, and not even too soon as it came three years after the movie came out. But this is like the kind of thing you would go back and watch this movie today because like Scream was like the best of what it was at the time. Just in terms of like what it was when she says like prior slasher films. Like Scream is like the golden standard as to what you compare anything to these days other than like the classics like Halloween. But Scream is in and of itself a classic now. As I mentioned earlier, Scream for me is in first place. So my second place movie was actually Scream 2. And just in terms of the critics uh, score on Rotten Tomatoes, Scream 2 is in first place, which I don't know if I agree necessarily, but there's gonna be a lot of people out there who are very upset about that. And just based on what it is here, we've got 81% for a tomato score. It's, you know, a fresh tomato score again. So just 2% more than Scream. But then the audience score is 57%. Wow. So that actually puts Scream 2, just, you know, in terms of how the audience sees it, less than Scream, Scream 5, Scream, the television show, and, Okay, it's got 1% more than Scream 4. These are the reasons why I just don't take a website like Rotten Tomatoes seriously at all, ever. Critics consensus. As with the first film, Scream 2 is a gleeful takedown of scary movie conventions that manages to poke fun at terrible horror sequels without falling victim to the same fate. I definitely agree with that. You know, I think that Scream 2 uh, is one of, if not my favorite horror movie sequels of all time. So I agree 100%. What a clever plot it is, spiked by hip one-liners that knowingly poke fun at such targets as Sandra Bullock, sorority sisters, and the sad state of sequels in general. Why are they saying bad things about Sandra Bullock? Scream 2, like its predecessor, is a genre-crossing film. It is about 50% horror film and 50% murder mystery. The mix worked very well last time and it continues continues to entertain this time. I definitely agree with that one. And I definitely feel that the murder mystery aspect of Scream 2 is greater than the murder mystery aspect of Scream 1. Uh, too serious to be funny and too lighthearted to be scary. Some of the characters in it talk about how sequels are inferior products and the movie they're in doesn't prove them wrong. You know, okay, obviously this is just a difference of opinions because the consensus did say that, you know, the, the film did avoid that, but this guy seems to think that it was a very apt way of referencing itself, uh, just in terms of like how sequels are inferior. And, and this one, which is short and to the point, it's not as good as the original. No, it's not as good as the original. Like, does that mean that it's, you know, worthy of a rotten score? No. But I do remember when this came out, it was touted as being just as good as the original, if not better. So that at least tracks with, you know, the reviews that I recall hearing. I want to thank my Patreon supporter, Oscar Tipton. If you guys want to see more of these Rotten Tomatoes franchise rankings, or even my own personal franchise rankings, you can check out either one of these playlists. Until next time, I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back.